Okay. Good morning and welcome to a hundred minutes of applied artificial intelligence. This is our webinar on how AI works with businesses. We, that is three EDs, EDIH, three European digital innovation hubs from France, Germany and Italy. What an ED exactly is, you will hear in a minute by Michael Zata-Nikowska from the European Commission. My name is Hauke Schlüter, I'm from ED in Germany. Well, artificial intelligence writes texts, artificial intelligence creates images, artificial intelligence creates almost everything, music, social media posts, and yes, also deep fakes, or so it seems, it creates everything. AI has become a real buzzword, everything sells better with artificial intelligence, and even if there's no true AI integrated in a product, if it's only intelligently coded, so be aware of fakes. Well, today, you'll only see true artificial intelligence from our cases. We have asked three great companies from Italy, Germany and France to show us the state of the art and use cases. Our agenda is, we will have a short introduction on the EDI network and our German, Italian and French EDIH. Then we have the case studies from each company and later we have time for question and answers. But before we start running into use cases, you should know what an EDIH is. So please welcome Malgo Zatanikowska from the European Commission. Gosha, floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Hauke, and thank you for inviting me here today. And uh, good morning, everyone. So it is my great pleasure to say a few words today about the European Digital Innovation Hubs Network. So this network is unique in the, in the landscape of uh, EU structures aiming at support companies in their digital transformation. It is unique because it is the only network that is solely focused on supporting digital transformation in the sustainable way, in building resilience, and possibly most importantly, in supporting companies in becoming more competitive uh, uh, in, the, in today's market. Secondly, the network, the hubs, the EDA ages or EDIs, like we, uh, like we call them, are available in every single member state. And not only, they are also in uh, Iceland, Norway, Liechtenstein, and soon also in Ukraine, Turkey, and a few of the Western Balkan countries. Therefore, they create a network of organizations that are able to support companies and public sector organizations mm -hmm in their local uh, environment, but also they are able to uh, lean back on the wider network in case more expertise or different expertise uh, is needed. Thirdly, the, the, the main advantage, I would say, of the network is that they are really responding to the needs of the companies. They are not pushing a solution on, uh, on the company. They are listening first to what the company needs and adapt their offer uh, to that uh, requirements. Therefore, nowadays, uh, for, uh, and more or less since uh, January uh, last year, Almost any company in the EU can reach out to their local uh, to their local eddy and get the support they need. They, it is not important from which sector they are or which technology they need. Eddy will be able to support them. But today we are talking specifically about the uh, artificial intelligence. As Hauke said, it is really a buzzword nowadays. Uh, a buzzword, everybody talks about it, but only 8% of our companies are actually uh, using it. While the objective of the European Commission and the European Union is to have at least 75% of them doing it. So uh, today's uh, webinar is just a small step on a long way that is still ahead of us. But I would like all of us to get inspired today by hearing the stories of the eddies and of the companies and remember that um, these are not the only opportunities that the, the, AI, offer, the AI offers, but yeah. many, there are many others. And if you get inspired by what you hear today, reach out to your local eddie and discuss with them further. So I stop here and now pass the floor to the real um, stars of today's event. Hauke, back to you. Thank you very much, Gosha, for giving us this presentation. And from Brussels, we directly go to Italy, to Lorenzo, who will give you a short introduction on their local EDIH. Please Thank roll. you very much. 
thank you very much, Oget, and you very much, Kusha, for uh, your introduction. We are happy to to be here and tell more about uh, the EDH. Um, so jumping directly to R2Digit, which is the Italian uh, digital, European Digital Innovation Hub for the Emilia-Romagna region in Italy. I will be really fast just to introduce you who we are and what we do. Uh, possibly with public sector organizations and uh, small medium enterprises in our region. As you can see in, uh, in this first slide, uh, we are the connection between the ADH uh, network, the other ADH as uh, Edit and uh, um, Dynamic, who are the addicts who are presenting uh, this today's webinar. And of course, we work with public sector organizations and small medium enterprises to deliver them services for digital transformation and of course the categories of service they fall mm -hmm. within test before invest skills and training support to find investments and innovation ecosystem and working we are able to deliver this set this catalog of services because uh, our app is coordinated by Arta, where where i work for who we are the coordinators and we give access to open innovation platforms to access to finance services for psos and smes at the same time we have two strong partners uh, both national and uh, local regional and the emilia romagna region who are cineca who is basically uh, the italian center for uh, high processing calculation and they are providing access to hpc um, infrastructures you all of you probably know leonardo the uh, now it's uh, the sixth supercomputer the most powerful supercomputer um in europe and, and and beyond and at the same time we have lepida which is the in-house um in-house agency for the emilia romagna region providing connection to public sector organizations all over the regional territory and they are providing test before invest services um namely I iot sensors and networks uh the um, development of chatbots for for um, psos and at the same time services to ensure privacy and data security for all PSOs in the region. Uh, what happened so far with our ADH? Uh, we just closed in February the first round of expression of interest for the public sector organizations that were uh, requesting access to our services. Uh, it was uh, really a great deal for us. We received 35 applications from uh, 22 PSOs, public sector organizations in the region and we hope to be uh, able to um, deliver services for a value of almost uh, half a million euros in the next month of course we are still in the process of evaluating the expression of interest so it will be important for us to be able to uh, let people know uh, who these public sector organizations are and how they will benefit from our services of course, we plan to have other services running, other expression of interest running next um, until, I mean, within the, the half of the year. And also it will be targeted to uh, small and medium enterprises. Um, speaking of which, of course, there are several um, services that we deliver. Uh, it's, as I mentioned, Open uh, Innovation Platforms is our EROI Open Innovation Platforms. We have uh, a news platform on yeah. European uh, calls and opportunities and news, which is called First Digital. And of course, we organize fundraising workshops, awareness raising events, and also we are part of the Enterprise Europe Network as Arthur. At the same time, Chineca is working a lot to deliver training courses and access to HPC infrastructures and of course also training on big data. Uh, of course, we are into the bad world of the artificial intelligence and it, this is happening especially um, with, um, with Lepida, which is uh, developing now several services for public sector organization. They run from uh, Internet of Things to uh, development of chatbots and of course, mm -hmm. so all that has to do with data and how public sector organization can handle data properly and benefit the whole ecosystem. Um, I just leave my contacts here uh, yeah. and the contacts of the European Digital Innovation Hub r 2 digit for the Emilia Romagna uh, region and for everybody who is interested because of course our webinars 
our workshops are for free and are open to everybody who wishes to attend to them. And I, thought, I spoke about the uh, regional ecosystem for us is the key. We are a regional ADH, meaning that our activities mainly work within the regional boundaries of Emilia-Romagna in Italy. And that's why we opted to having, uh, say, a digital gem from our ecosystem uh, coming here today and talking about artificial intelligence. And this gem is Amagamma, which is a small medium enterprises with a 10 year history in providing AI solutions for several business sectors. And that's why we are happy to have uh, here uh, Giovanni Anceschi, which is uh, the head of innovation from Aga Amagamma. And we will hear from him about the solutions they're providing and how they work with several businesses and how they can be tailored to the needs of several businesses. So I hope to have enthralled you and to uh, learn more from, of course, the, the questions that you have, as uh, we mentioned before in the chat, the chat is there for you. Please write down your question. We will have time at the end of the uh, three presentations to answer your questions. So um, I give the floor to Giovanni Anceschi and thank you all for being here no. let's, let's Let's introduce the EDIS first and... Ah, okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. No, fine. Let's make the EDs and we come back to. Yeah, yeah, the, definitely. The, thank you. Yeah, thank you. We have the slide order. Okay, thank you, Lorenzo. I now have the pleasure to introduce to you the EDH in Germany, and that's our key visual uh, approaches combining old masters with new masters. We consider the companies we serve of the old masters being expert for their business, for their business model and for their sector of the industry. And we are some kind of new masters helping with new technologies to further their business. We are EDIATH. We have played with the name uh, ED and integrated here for technology. And we are the innovation hub for HESI in Germany. If you know Germany's layout, we're quite in the center there where the flag post is. That's the city of Frankfurt. We are in the Frankfurt Rhine Main area. The key technologies we offer are artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, high performance computing, and advanced digital tools. The services we offer are the classic services of an EDIH is test before invest, before you start to invest in a, in a like metal printing, in a solution, in a KI system, in a large range, uh, WLAN station for a city you can have a look at it, how it works, and discuss with the expert how it does fit into your business model. Then we have skills and training, offering of seminars, day of the open door, workshops and missions. We have support to find investments. All these activities that require some budgets. We help you in finding that budget by grants, by private equity, venture capital companies or banks. And altogether, we put in an innovation ecosystem networking that we learn, create and learn from best practices like today and can apply them. We are a consortium, House of Digital Transformation. This is my organization. We are coordinator. With us are GSI Helmholtz, a research group from Germany, very famous. They have a supercomputer near the town of Darmstadt. It's a green cube, so you can have high performance computing with low emissions. We have Hessian AI, that's the center of artificial intelligence in Hesse. It's 13 universities offering AI solutions and research. It's University of Darmstadt with PTW. They are a center for taking industrial production to a digital level and they have a factory where you can watch uh, CNC machines, metal printing and digital workflows, robotics for industrial production. We have the Fraunhofer Institute in combination with Athene. They stand for cybersecurity. It's the very good center in Europe for research and for applied sciences. And we have the Tech Quarter in Frankfurt, which is an ecosystem for startups with a little direction into finance. Then again, this is what we do. We are supporting organizations in their digital transformation, combining old mastership with new mastership. That's a Vermeer in the background with MacBooks and laptops. 
And if you're very quick, you can take a screenshot and have my contact details. And I'm inviting you to contact us and to use the services of our EDAH in Frankfurt and throughout Hesse. So I'm happy to hand over to Lea Lemarie, who will give you an introduction on their EDAH in France. Thank you, Auke. Uh, it's a pleasure to see you all here. Indeed, let's go for the final presentation of the EDIH this morning. This one is about dynamic. And as you can see from this map, we have French EDIH located in probably the most beautiful region from France, uh, Nouvelle Aquitaine, in the very southwest of the country. And we aim to help companies, manufacturing companies, but also public authorities with an innovative project mm -hmm. to develop uh, their skills while using the technologies from the digital. <clears throat> we have a strong focus on the trustworthy AI that I will explain just later. So this is who we are, 13 partners, 13 strong partners from the region. It's being coordinated by uh, ADE, which is the uh, Regional Innovation and Development Agency. We've got uh, competitiveness cluster, um, research institutes, uh, technology centers, but also Institute of Technology. Um, who, who is Dynamic for? So public authorities, as I, was, as I was saying, but also manufacturing companies, no matter their, their sizes, and they can be from every sector from the industry. What about the technological offer? Well, we have four technological nodes. Uh, the first one, the one that we're going to speak about today, which is, of course, artificial intelligence, but we also um, are uh, using the IoT, Internet of Things, everything related to robotics, and we will have a presentation in uh, this uh, sense later with cognitive, cognitive engines, and then um, the digital twins. Trustworthy AI, uh, which is um, our strong focus on dynamic. Well, what is it? I'm quite sure that uh, some of you have heard about the um, AI Act that was voted a few months ago by the Commission. Well, they have seven conditions, six conditions uh, that a good AI has to follow. Uh, it has to be respectful for your privacy, uh, explainable, safe and secure, and so on and so on. And this is something that we try to put in every service that we have uh, in Dynamic. We also try to uh, educate, uh, sensibilize, but also raise awareness of the public authorities and manufacturing companies from the region with this subject. So about the services, five categories, 28 of them, the first category that we have is related to the analysis and the diagnostic that we can provide you. Um, as you can see, all of the services are, be co are being co-funded by the European Commission, but also by the Nouvelle Aquitaine region. So they can give you a very, very interesting rates regarding the price. Then about the test before invest, you can have some technical recommendation and specification, but also some help for a prototype that you have. Regarding the trainings, well, let's say that they're going to be adapted to what you want. And uh, you can have some workshops from uh, long or short periods, but also uh, some focus on industrial use case. Regarding the fundings that we can uh, help you find, well, let's say that the main idea is to identify the right counter at the right time. And this, for instance, networking is probably uh, one uh, of the most interesting for you because it can know it can give you access to the EDIH network, like uh, with our difference from Italy or from uh, Germany that we have today, but also from all of the ecosystems that uh, Dynamic is gravitating into. Um, unfortunately, I only have five minutes, so I can describe all of the services, but if you have been interested about what you just heard and what you just see, you can go into our website, uh, consult the catalog and the 28 services that we have. And you can also find in French some webinar, some acculturation and sensibilization webinar. And if you like this presentation, well, you have my contacts. So you can either email me or uh, text me. Thank you for this time. I see you just later. And I give back the floor to Auke. 
Thank you very much, Lea. It's indeed one of the most beautiful regions in, in France. So we're now going to Bologna, Italy, and I'm handing over to Lorenzo, who will introduce his use case by Amagama. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you for skipping uh, before. Uh, of course, thanks to you for the moderation. Thanks to the colleagues and Lea from Dynamic for hosting us uh, the webinar today. As anticipated, we care about the regional ecosystem. That's why we invited a uh, digital champion, a gem from our ecosystem in Emilia Romagna, which is Amagamma, is a small medium enterprise with 10 year history in managing AI solution and delivering them to the different businesses from different sectors. So with Giovanni Anceschi, who is head of innovation of Amagamma, we will explore the solutions tailored to different sectors of business. So I leave the floor to Giovanni and thank him for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lorenzo. Thank you, Hauke. Thank you for, for having me. And this is a great opportunity for, for us to learn from, from the ecosystem, from the community. So I'm really happy to, to join this presentation today and to share some insights about our business and what we do uh, mainly in Italy to sustain the AI development for, for our customers. Um, so uh, today I'm mainly talking about our AI solutions and how uh, Amagamma is uh, building value for our customers thanks to, to them. Um, I'm going to have a very quick introduction about uh, ourselves, uh, who we are, and then uh, we're going to, to talk about uh, what we do mainly for um, optimizing uh, supply chains uh, thanks to AI, AI algorithms and also how we are in, in integrating generative AI into our, our solutions. And then we will have a quick view about the uh, future work. So um, Amagamma has been uh, uh, in the market uh, for 10 years now. Uh, we started up in 2013 uh, with the main goal to optimize uh, uh, the energy efficiency field, the energy efficiency sector, thanks to uh, applied mathematics and, and artificial intelligence. And now we, we have grown up to almost 100 people. Uh, we, we've been partnering with different universities, mainly in our territory, and uh, we have more than 250 customers with solutions that are deployed uh, on very different uh, AI, AI services. Um, the company has just been acquired by Accenture, so uh, we foresee a future where uh, also we, we will have the opportunity to scale our, our business also with a more international perspective, which is something that we missed in this uh, 10 years growth. Um, we offer the best uh, choice instruments to our, to our customers thanks to uh, innovation and uh, artificial intelligence applied to very different processes. Our approach uh, during these 10 years has been based upon two uh, main pillars. We, we've been developing an advisory uh, value proposition that helped us uh, face very different problems uh, uh, with the customers from, uh, the, from big corporations in the oil and gas sector uh, to uh, small and medium business that uh, are really important for our economical development. And then we have an approach which is mainly based on solutions, which uh, have the, the goal to, to make uh, AI more accessible and more scalable and to uh, reach high performance, mainly in the supply chain. And why supply chain? Because that, that was a, a recurrent need that we found on our, on our market. And it is also based on uh, market analysts one of the, the field where artificial intelligence has the, the highest potential to uh, enhance uh, processes and uh, to, to, to assist uh, all the, um, let's say, the issues that companies with very different uh, sizes face every day. So yeah, basically with our advisory uh, approach, we targeted the different companies um, to uh, ask and to work with them um, co-create uh, different uh, different solutions that could enable uh, a quick innovation in terms of uh, 
data management and AI implementation to solve uh, issues in very different field. And uh, talking about solutions, which will be my main focus today, we have developed during these last uh, three to four years, five different solutions that address uh, different problems for, for our customers. The main three, Anagram Ahead and Aware, uh, refer to the supply chain. So Anagram is basically uh, built to improve the efficiency of production processes thanks to uh, scheduling and planning uh, algorithms that are uh, rooted in an AI, in a strong AI approach. Ahead is our solution to uh, help our customers uh, build strategic decisions in advance via uh, time series forecasting, which is mostly used for uh, problems in terms of demand forecasting. And Aware is our solution uh, that we built to uh, address replenishment problems for our for our customers. Then the two the two new board, let's say, Aradoc and uh, Forex. The first one is uh, uh, my main focus today, and is a platform that uh, uh, enables customers to uh, put intelligence inside their uh, their documents and their document based processes. Also, thanks to a Gen AI integration, which uh, uh, enables very different teams to, for example, chat with their documents and to manage their documents in a very, uh, say, chat GPT-like uh, uh, way, which is based on open source models and on a different approach than the one provided by, by OpenAI. So it's really rooted in our European uh, approach to, to generative AI. Aphorex is something that we developed for uh, predicting foreign currency exchange rates and help the main exporter, which are uh, luckily a really important business for our region, to face uh, um, all the issues related to, to, such, uh, to such problems. Um, very quickly, we invest in shared knowledge in the AI world, and this is something we are very proud of. Um, we have lots of projects in the education sector <coughs> where we uh, where we work together with the teachers and, and students, uh, mainly from 10 to 15 years aged, uh, to, uh, to really uh, make AI accessible to very different uh, uh, processes and, and, and uh, put AI inside our, our classroom with our teachers that are already working on different subjects. Uh, we, we we are really focused on impacts and uh, on the long-term value that AI can enable uh, both in a big corporation and in our small medium business. And we uh, have invested a lot also thanks to, to the support of Arter and, and our region in uh, uh, research and development projects that uh, strengthen our links with the, the main universities of our territory. Here are just a, a few names uh, related with our customers, but the, I, I'm not going to comment this slide, but I, I, I was just interested in letting you know that we work both with uh, uh, very big and international groups like Enel and with small and medium business that are really the, the roots of our uh, local market and uh, have a great opportunity to uh, to innovate thanks to artificial intelligence. Uh, a quick overview of our, uh, of our solutions uh, that are the ones I cited uh, a few minutes ago. First one is AWARE. AWARE is our solution we built to optimize the warehouse management and to assist our customers in all, our, in all the replenishment uh, phase which uh, can be enhanced by um, providing customers with a, a precise demand forecast and, a, and an, a, an accurate one that helps our optimization uh, uh, algorithms uh, really find the best solution uh, to, uh, to guarantee that uh, the replenishment requirements are uh, constantly reached uh, with the dynamic forecast that can be adapted to all the specifics that uh, every customer brings. And this is something that, uh, let's say, is uh, 
really common ground for, uh, in my opinion, for uh, making AI really impactful and accessible to mainly to small medium businesses to, of course, to bring to the market uh, a stable technology which have a, a, a product, a, a strong product, but then to adapt all the technology to uh, customers' processes in order to make it really useful, impactful, and accessible for uh, very different targets. Mm. Our first use case uh, for uh, a replenishment solution was with Cheerfood. Cheerfood is a local uh, company, uh, which is really strong in all the, let's say, uh, center to north uh, Italy. Uh, I'm, I'm I want just to underline the results we we worked uh, we worked on, thanks to a co co creation and a collaboration with the, all the chief food replenishment uh, team. Um, we had a, a really high increase in in terms of trackable references. So in terms of uh, general management of how the the warehouse uh, can be uh, optimized. And we reduced the food waste of about the 15%, which is something really, really useful and really interesting for, for, for this use case. And this is, let's say, a, a flavor of how a good AI can bring value to not only to customers, but to, to broader communities. Um, for the sake of time, let me be very quickly uh, sharing something about uh, about Anagram, which is our solution that is aimed at improving the efficiency of production. And thanks to uh, both a uh, uh, research optimization approach, so uh, re with research uh, uh, oper operating research algorithms, and with uh, uh, deep learning that can uh, 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 deep learning algorithms that can enter. Uh, the production stage uh, of very different customers and uh, optimize their production uh, lines and, and products. Uh, we have uh, about 20 different use cases uh, in terms of uh, uh, scheduling and planning optimization. I chose this one, which uh, uh, is related to Ferrari Roloplast, which is a small business uh, uh, in our region. Uh, they they grew up very quickly and so they really needed uh, to, to optimize their production to have the, the capacity to better invest uh, in, the, in building their business. Um, we, we provided them with uh, interesting results again, both in terms of uh, reducing the, the raw material waste, which is something which has an impact also for all the stakeholders uh, involved in their in their process, and we increased their their uh, capability of delivering orders in time, which is which was actually the main business goal for uh, for Ferrari Rolleplast. A better review of uh, what ahead can bring to the market. It's our tool to enhance the demand forecasting uh, phase, and. Uh, with such a vision in mind, you can understand that this is very, um, I mean, it's linked with the, all the main uh, supply chain uh, uh, phases, and particularly we, did, we deliver ahead uh, together with AWARE to, to make uh, all the uh, inventory management uh, uh, ready, also thanks to a better demand forecasting. Uh, this is the case of a uh, food industry where we put AI in place to enhance their opportunity to increase uh, uh, the forecast accuracy and to better manage all the, um, the demand management process uh, by reducing the, uh, the lead time uh, that was uh, uh, their main issue in terms of, uh, of demand planning. Um, ad hoc is our solution that was born before uh, all the generative AI hype and it was built to bring to the market natural language processes, uh, processing algorithms um, that could be delivered and deployed with a quick and robust uh, uh, approach uh, to help our customers uh, put intelligence inside their 
and documents-based uh, processes. Of course, a doc uh, has been uh, changing very quickly in the last, uh, let's say, year, year and a half. Uh, today, this is our, uh, let's say, most advanced uh, platform to integrate uh, generative AI that are made available both by uh, international vendors and by uh, the local open source uh, community and made all these things available to our customers that have issues in terms of managing uh, managing uh, huge amounts of documents. Um, this is a case where we, we put generative AI in place to help our customers quickly extract information and uh, automate the information extraction from uh, uh, thousands of documents that are uploaded on a daily basis. And this is, uh, uh, this is reached thanks to both an, an NLP approach, so let's say pre-chat uh, GPT approach, and uh, more recently, thanks to the integration of what Gen AI can bring to this market, where uh, the access of all these large language models can really help uh, um, close the gap between uh, uh, the, 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 the initial phase where you have to collect uh, data and to correlate those data to the problem you have to solve and then to train a complex algorithm. That was the, the pre-Gen AI world. And, uh, close the gap between that longer, let's say, training session to the, uh, the value that we can deliver when the, such an algorithm is in place. Thanks to Gen AI, we are really reducing uh, the, the, the lead time which is required for the first uh, iteration with such projects. And this is something that, uh, has, uh, that, that, let's say, has been helping our customers um, reach uh, uh, an AI-based uh, value for their processes in, very, in a very quicker way. I'm running out of time. Let me just share uh, something about the Forex, which is our uh, solution to uh, predict the exchange rate between uh, uh, different uh, currencies and help our customers use those predictions to um, enhance their, finan their financial uh, uh, position of their financial performance, which is really important, especially if you have uh, um, an export rate, which is, uh, let's say, uh, uh, really uh, important for, for the general revenue of the company. The first use case uh, uh, we put in place uh, provided our customer with uh, quite a good economic gain, but which was really rooted in the opportunity to have access to a really better accuracy, accuracy in terms of uh, both medium term and long term forecasting, thanks to our AI algorithms. Okay, here I miss uh, my final slide, but uh, what I would like to, to mention is that uh, uh, I'm really happy to, to have this opportunity to be with you today and to learn from uh, uh, what uh, uh, all the other people in this community are bringing to 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 us. Uh, my main uh, target is to uh, understand uh, whether there are possibilities to work together, also with uh, with all the other uh, speakers and uh, with uh, uh, all the people involved in uh, this European Digital Innovation Hub. So thank you again, and I leave the floor to okay. Mm. Thanks. Thank you very much, Giovanni. And you're not running out of time. You're actually perfectly on the second because we started two minutes later. So it's perfectly. Well, we are now in Germany. Back to our Edith. We are on Edith since one year, 12 months. And we have staged almost two or more than 250 formats, like seminars, workshops, missions, and had more than 2,500 participants in it which is quite nice. And we have blue chip partners like Procter & Gamble, Fraport, Accenture, who help us in certain issues, and the association of the book industry, which is Börsenverein des Deutschen Buchhandels. And I'm really proud today that you have a true artificial intelligence case from Springer Nature. 
Springer Nature is a leading global scientific publishing house for academic publishing, and I'm happy to say they are of German origin. And today with us is Andreas Funk, editorial director and managing director. We had a quick replacement of Vivian Bender, who's in the um, in the program, but she's in China, and she has a very bad perception, which I'm <laughs> happy to hear <laughs> that other countries yeah. are not not improving as they, as they might uh, be uh, alleged to. So I'm handing over to Andreas. Yeah, and to inform you on the project transformation power of GPT for publishers and authors. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, hopefully, you can hear me right now. Is audio good? Yeah, yeah fine. perfect. Um, yeah, hello from my side. Um, as you already said, I'm um, a publisher. I'm working for Springer Nature here in Wiesbaden, and today I'm going to present to you a topic. Um, AI as partner in publishing and how to use the power of the transformative GPT power for authors and publishers. And um, yeah, thank you for having me. Um, as you already said, um, Vivian is in China today, but she's part of my team and I was and I, I am um, very deep in this project. So um, um, information um, from the first hand here also. Um, next, please. With the power and um, the topic of um, GPT, um, the first authors approach us. Um, one slide back, please. Should be. Um, with the um, GPT coming to us, first authors approached us, as I said, and um, they came with a desire to us to write a book with GPT. And uh, as a publishing house, we not only want to a company the change but um we we also want actively to change it uh, to shape it and um yeah to drive it ethically and sustainability with sustainability topics also um so we started looking for suitable authors and who are innovative experts and specialists in their areas and that fit the program yeah uh, we assembled therefore a uh, quite interdiscipl interdisciplinary team from IT, AI, editing with authors, uh, with legal colleagues, with colleagues from public relations, etc. And we met, we met here in Hesse, in Wiesbaden, and we had some kind of hackathon, yeah, and a hack day where we, and uh, next slide, please, where we, um, yeah, created a book. The goal was to create a book with a synergy um, we see from AI um, with the topic of time constraints and workflow optimizations and how AI can and could help here. Um, we have identified uh, three outstanding authors, as I said, to bring expertise here, technical background, and they have a high degree of willingness also to innovate. So, um, um, mandatory also in the forehand was um, a detailed uh, content preparation and uh, in that hackathon we created um, the final title, um, we had um, the final um, topic selection done in the forehand and we had to create uh, bullet points in order to do a perfect prompting in that day or on that day. Um, in reality is it was some kind of um, prompt ping pong, as we say. Um, we sat on a table, as you saw on the slides before, um, working um, with many laptops and we had uh, authors um, um, prompting and we had colleagues um, helping to create prompts and uh, with other authors we checked the, the results and it uh, went back and we optimized um, the prompts and we optimized the manuscripts uh, we, we got in, in the end. In the end of the day, we had 180 pages of manuscript and it was a draft for sure. It was a draft, but it was uh, quite a good draft. And um, after several weeks of quality assurance and post-processing um, with the authors and our production colleagues, um, yeah, we had a final manuscript uh, which went into uh, production and 
we had this result as you see here and um, if you uh, want to have a look um, check the qr code you can um, um, read um, the book there and uh, have a look uh, what we did uh, and what the quality looks like um, we presented this book uh, also at the frankfurt book fair and uh, many other occasions and we were also shortlisted for the future book award in london we were very proud of that because we were the only german language book um, nominated there in the moment um, also because of the international feedback we got um, this project is in auto translation um, so uh, this book will be available also in english uh, in, in in short time um, also with the help of gpt yeah, what we did um, after that experiment and the publication, we sat together and analyzed what we did. And we figured out that uh, writing a book, it's much mm. like a design process. And um, next, please. That's why we created the AI book designer. This is an AI powered um, book designer um, supporting editors and authors making their roles clear and efficient and to create, to create uh, some kind of a structural way to help to create a book with the help of AI. Next, please. So we check the whole book writing process for the potential of the facilitating of AI in it. Yeah? And by doing this, we automated the process we experimented in uh, in Wiesbaden. Yeah, so um, we we did that uh, live, and uh, later on we created um, this tool. Next, please. As a classical book project, um, you might know it. Um, this book and many other books need information. Yeah, for example, the editor needs background information about the author, the planned target group. Um, what the topic is, and so on, and so on. And we created that and collected that to create perfect prompts. In the end of the stages, um, we gathered even more data um, and, and looked in, in the way we do books right now and structured this, and we identified parameters. And with those parameters, we created what we will see on the next slide. Um, we combined those and created some kind of, um, yeah, fully automated process um, on, a, on a platform um, to create some process connecting human actors and AI. It's always human in the loop. Yeah, this is very important. Um, the authors are the experts. Yeah. And uh, next slide, please. And um, you see here, um, what our platform does. Um, our platform provides a structured approach to content creation in seven steps. It ensures that every crucial aspect is covered from author information, target groups, media type, chapter, content, sources, etc. Um, from a first draft to a final manuscript. Throughout the process, um, um, our designer offers suggestions based on the given information and gives opportunities of improvement during the creation of the book process. So we've eliminated the concern of AI also doing hallucinations by providing AI with a solid um, and, and, and detailed data level yeah? and um, allowing authors and editors to have a frequent and constant interaction and steering of the content. So it's not um, one input and one output, it's always the human in the loop. And we facilitate frequent uh, feedback loops, as I said, involving authors, and um, we have some kind of dynamic process here in the end. Um, our system is a step-by-step -step approach um, from mm. planning to generating a manuscript, and it's in the end saving time and a lot of effort on the post writing and formatting of a manuscript. The next slide, please. Um, as we are still 
in a quite early stage and we have a, a prototype here we were early uh, we were able to to create some kind of mvp in the end anyway uh, um with has with ha which has some um um, um opportunities to um um, to create um, different uh, product types and and solves many um, disciplines, but it's not um, fully um, finalized yet. Um, but let's have a look um, on the next slide. There you will see what we did. What you see here is basically a classical workflow for book and content writing. To make it easier, we created seven big steps and we illustrated it by naming it after weekdays. We figured out that the steps of book writing and where I can support us and we built the prototype after those seven days. Yeah. Um, so we created and, and defined um, elements where AI can help and where the author um, should do the work for us. For example, all the information given in the Monday step, design the book, is needed in order for the AI to understand where the writer is coming from. So the professional background of the author and what the reader, in terms of what the target group needs, wants, um, wants to need, needs. So furthermore, um, all the information um, given um, is, is very important um, that we have a trustful uh, result in the end. Yeah. Each step is um, revisible um, and, and uh, we can go back a day if we need to. And um, each generated content is adjustable and in all times the editors and the authors are in the loop to ensure high quality for the final outcome step by step. We also um, transparently show what AI is generating and ensure that each outcome is checked and adjusted. Um, the AI is facilitated only as a writing and supporting tool in writing. All the content and experiences um, needs to come from the author in the end. So we have um, a, a rule um, with, uh, with uh, let's say, uh, two um, points. Um, always have the human in the loop yeah nothing is published without human approval and the question is can the author write a book without ai and would you as an editor publish with them without the help of ai if the answer is yes we will create and use the prototype next slide please this is Vivian. She should be here today, but she is in China. So um, if you want to have a look and a chat with me, um, check out LinkedIn. My name is Andreas Funk, and I'd be happy to get in contact with you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much, Andreas. And I think this is amazing. I've, um, I have the book. I have read it. And the quality is extraordinary. How it works you, you don't see it's written by uh, i just you don't um realize it. it's like a Turing test and say yes that's a human being who wrote it thank you so much yeah we were very proud of our authors also because um they are working in auditing and this was very important for us we wanted to have authors um who are very keen on quality and which are very um keen on details yeah and and therefore we created this book with uh, authors um, from from um, yeah auditing and um, we are quite happy it went out this good yeah yeah thank you well the Wiesbaden project the Wiesbaden experiment worked like the Philadelphia experiment was great <laughs> well, yeah. I have some questions for you later in the Q and A section and now we go to to France in their showcase for industrial and health applications and I'm handing over to Leah. Yes, it's working. Sorry for the delay. 
Mm-hmm. Um, okay, let's go to back to friends, back to sisters, exactly, near Bordeaux, where we will have the pleasure to hear Ulysse Michon, who's the COO from Cognitive Engines, a company that is in the very heart, at the very heart of the industry 4.0, where AI is being used for collaborative robots uh, in the industrial and healthcare sector, as you were saying. Okay, so let's go for Ulysse, who is going to now share his uh, screen. There it is. Good. Hi, David, <laughs> and, and for you as a technical part of this webinar. Ulysse, uh, your microphone is, is closed, uh, so we, we can see your screen. Uh, you sh- you're, sh- you're sharing your screen now. Yeah, listen, you hear me? Yeah, perfect. I disappear, <laughs> bye. <laughs> Thanks. And so uh, I would like to mention that our AI is a, a proprietary item, which is not linked uh, to uh, the GAFAM system. So we should represent a kind of sovereignty for Europe uh, using this kind of AI. So um, first of all, uh, the company was started in uh, during the COVID-19. So uh, we were uh, settled in a place where is uh, some uh, manufacturing of electronic cards, and we we were the witnesses of uh, a, a company which is able to uh, to provide uh, customers, uh, even if, uh, for for example, aeronautics uh, disappeared from the screens at that time. So we come out that uh, industry from 4.0 is uh, is important for Europe to uh, to be relocated, and uh, it's a matter of uh, uh, the wages of salaries, the knowledge, because we are uh, very very uh, skilled and uh, how to introduce uh, robotics uh, with uh, intuitive uh, teaching of the robotics. So on the right side, I, I would say it's a, a sum up of what we are doing. Uh, there is a robot, we, we buy it from uh, the shelves and uh, we uh, uh, put some vision uh, in order to see the 3D environment. And we have an AI uh, that is uh, driving the robot as a trajectory. So, there is no code uh, for uh, making the trajectory of the robots. So the the short story of uh, of uh, our company is uh, the foundation in uh, 2019 in order to protect uh, the AI itself, and then we uh, have some uh, funding from our region uh, near uh, Nouvelle Aquitaine uh, for demonstrating uh, the system, and we were in position to sell our first uh, pick and place workstation in 2001. So we, we become, uh, at the first, we, we thought uh, we, we would be a, a company for digital only and uh, selling our solution to, uh, to integrators. But uh, uh, because we are uh, dealing with uh, small companies, small, small uh, factoring companies, we, we became, in fact, uh, an integrator by ourselves. <clears throat> and now we are in position because we have uh, some reputation to, uh, to deal with a bigger company like uh, KUKA Aerospace. So KUKA is... Uh, is a, a arm a robot arm manufacturer, and we are providing some software and knowledge uh, to them in order to uh, complete their technology. And finally, uh, our actuality, uh, our news, is we are man- we have managed to 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 close the seed equity. So it's a uh, good news because we are ready to uh, cooperate and uh, make some collaboration anywhere in Europe for funding, for example, uh, and providing uh, new technologies. So I am Ulysses Michon, uh, 15 year old. I have been uh, involved uh, in startup from uh, the start of my career, uh, 23 years. And uh, I am a a physical engineer and a physics engineer. And uh, I complete my course with a finance MBA. My uh, associate, who is on on the picture, is the the key uh, guy for technical aspect. He is the author of uh, the AI. 
And uh, we are a startup, so uh, we have only five employers for the time being. And uh, our growth is, I would say, one workstation per, per year is sold. But we have uh, some good uh, good uh, customer. Uh, I would say Kuka is uh, for higher space uh, position. Excelia is regarding components, uh, high high quality components produced in France, not in China, in France. And uh, Boringer Ingelheim is a well-known uh, company uh, for pharmaceutical and, and uh, uh, medical uh, uh, yes. So what we have seen in the industry, there are repetitive gestures. Uh, this repetitive gesture is providing a muscular skeletal disorder. Um, in France, it's 27% uh, of uh, work stop for salaries uh, for employees. So uh, that means if people become ill due to this repetitive gesture, they are coming out of the industry. So it's a loss mm -hmm. and uh, it's a matter of uh, managing the skills. So uh, we we'll try to put uh, the robotics anywhere uh, there is uh, this uh, uh, button neck uh, in, in the automation uh, production line. Industry is also uh, uh, an exposure to invisible risk. It can be chemicals, mm -hmm. it can be electricals for, for test of electronics. Mm -hmm. And we came out also in comprehension that uh, uh, for Quality, it's very uh, expensive to do quality when you are changing series of components or series of products anytime. So if you are monotonous, you, you can invest in automate, automation for quality assessment. But anytime you, have a, you are moving from one series to another, uh, it, it, it is very difficult to assess uh, manual uh, quality. So what we are providing is... Uh, uh, a combo of technology, uh, selecting a robot, putting some eyes and a brain in order to uh, have a measurement in 3D of the environment. And this combo of things uh, allows uh, a communication through a gesture of the operator and brings some flexibility and adaptation to uh, things that happen in the workstation, in the workspace. So in order to illustrate what we did uh, for uh, um, the AI, it's algorithm, it's reinforcement AI. So you have a chicken uh, with a, a gratification, which is corn, and uh, it knows how to uh, stick uh, the, the pink uh, round. And if he, he teached uh, on, only on the pink, he, he will uh, stick uh, the, the pink. So we reproduce that with a robot. We gr gratify a robot to do uh, some things, and uh, it will uh, only do what he is teached for. So as I mentioned, we are using, at the first order, 3D cameras. So uh, the main uh, idea of 3D uh, using 3D cameras is to say that you are uh, not uh, sensitive of uh, the light, you are not sensitive of sticker or color because you are just looking uh, where are the objects. So we are able to use uh, a vision uh, to, to see a bulk of things. And in second order, we can qualify things like uh, barcode, uh, stickers, and so on. So uh, uh, we do that in real time. Uh, you have seen the robot moving with its trajectory. It's a uh, standalone on, on a computer. It is not uh, connected to a, a network and data rooms. Uh, and the, the teaching of the robot is done locally. So it's, uh, uh, we do think, uh, important regarding a cyber defense. So another thing about the 3D, um, it is the possibility to see the, the arm of the, 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 the employers to avoid a collision, but also to have some gesture to start the system. So on this view, you, you have a bulk of uh, the flask and you have uh, the center of the flask, which is detected, the caps, which is detected by the, the uh, green uh, dots. And you have the grid of what is a hand uh, detected by the robot in real time. 
So this is one of our proof of concept with uh, for Boringer in the line. We have a bulk area. The robot is taking the, the flask in this area and then scan the barcode and then would put it in, in, in a support. Regarding uh, the, the robot, uh, we are just uh, not a producer of robots. We buy it on the market and we integrate vision and AI for driving uh, the, this robot arm. We are using uh, mainly uh, classical grippers or uh, vacuum system, but we uh, design uh, the end of the tips. We are now, uh, I have some question from mainly uh, aerospace uh, to, to move uh, the system in, in the facility. So uh, it's a matter of a, a vehicle guide. And we also use 2D camera, but with our AI to assess quality of the product we are manipulating. So the what we achieved, uh, our first workstation is that. So you have a, a, a place where to, to take the box. Uh, so it's a known area. Then the boat is uh, uh, looking at the table with all these moving of uh, bottles and take itself uh, the moment to to to, to, to get the, the bottles on the table uh, and do it uh, by itself. So it's a very limited footprint because we replaced uh, someone uh, which was uh, doing that manually, but we have a cooperation from human and robot on, on the same place. The, the, the person uh, which was uh, free from uh, this uh, operation is now uh, making a quality assessment and refilling uh, the production line, automatic production line. So uh, we achieve uh, within the past months uh, pick and place of components. So on, on the left side, you, you see some uh, condensator, CMS condensator, which are uh, white on white uh, support. And we are uh, uh, operating at the night. Um, you have seen uh, the, the cartooning of the flask, but uh, also we are providing a quality assessment. Regarding uh, our cooperation with Dynamics, uh, the first time uh, we have a, a, a collaboration with uh, the system, uh, the, the, this authority, is, it, it was for our evaluation. So we wanted to share uh, with the, 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 the partner uh, of this network uh, what we did and have uh, an external view and a scientific view of uh, what we did in order to have uh, some uh, preconization to move uh, in the future uh, from raising money, but also uh, finding uh, some partners to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to develop some uh, new technology uh, in collaboration. So uh, we had the opportunity to, to, uh, to answer Airashi program, and we are still waiting uh, to know if uh, we have succeeded or not <laughs> this, uh, this call. But we have done also a learning expedition in Spain uh, in order to meet some uh, research and technology alliance. And uh, now, because we have uh, this equity, uh, seed equity, we are open to, 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 uh, to open a new discussion with uh, any company in Europe or in France to, to go uh, on development. We also uh, select uh, ROS. Uh, ROS is a, um, a language of robotics, uh, which would be a uh, common of a lot of uh, brands of robotics. So we, we are asking to, to be teach, uh, to teach our team for, for that. So this is uh, our clusters. Uh, there are some uh, for uh, sovereignty of AI without GAFAM, Hub France AI, Akiten Robotics, uh, sorry, uh, Alicena is about uh, health, Paul Pharma is about uh, pharmaceutics, and we have some uh, showrooms now in France, and we hope to, to go to Germany next, next week, uh, next, next year, sorry. So please, uh, if you have some question, uh, do not hesitate to contact us, and uh, we are ready to 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 cooperate uh, in, through through a partnership and eu program
Thank you, Ulysse, for this uh, excellent uh, presentation. Uh, now is the time for you for the for the Q and A. So um, I don't know if Alka, you want to say something, or we go straight to the Q and A session. Yes, thank you very much, Leah and Ulysse, for your great presentation. And I just received um, a question, and I'd like to encourage you to open the floor for discussion. Just put your questions into the chat if they are to Amagama we heard from Italy, to Spring in Asia, Work in Germany, or just that we heard robotics in, in Italy, as pardon, in France, or to the European Commission. Gosha might be happy to, to answer any questions. And the first question I see here is by Alvaro, and the same question was coming into my mind when I saw your chicken movie. How do you gratify a robot? <laughs> okay, Why so... Not, uh, not yeah. <laughs> so uh, for a human brain, uh, the first gratification could be uh, having some coffee and uh, croissant uh, at the morning, uh, ma making love, uh, I would say. So uh, being uh, in a good shape, so making sports. Um, so uh, we are using a, a kind of a, um, a bar of uh, love for the robots. So uh, it should be uh, gratified with a, a small uh, uh, button or with a gesture, and it, it increases uh, his, uh, his bar of health or, or, or life or, or love, I would say. Okay, and so, so robot learns by that, by gratification to... to yeah, it. yeah, it's a so, topic. So uh, we are very happy to say maybe some human in manufacturing can be gratifying a robot in order to work with... And we are not sure that human with human are so gratification have this gratification. Okay, great. Just seen another question to Andreas Springer Nature. I have a question for him, but I'm just reading it. That have you been thinking of similar books designer for nonfiction? Definitely, is much more complicated due to the creative process and steps, and so on. But do you think that there might be a potential? Question mm. to the company. You mean a non fiction? This, this was a non fiction book Andreas presented. Do you mean fiction? Yeah, exactly. It was a uh, non fiction. Yeah. I, I strongly believe that uh, doing fiction is, is easy with GPT. Um, but uh, non fiction and, and doing professional books, um, as I said, um, books um, which work for. Um, um, people working in taxation or in, in auditing, um, they need to have uh, the best quality. Yeah? And um, therefore, I think um, that, um, um, yeah, it is possible. And we showed it, we, we did it, yeah, and, and we can do it again. Yeah, so. Um, yeah. No, I think Christian, the um, uh, Komina just corrected himself or herself. Um, he means, or well, she means, fiction books so would we be able to have a similar process for crime novels or mysteries yeah hmm. i think so um I, I as i know as a not not from spring and nature um <laughs> but it should be possible i think yeah um if it works for um those kind of um highly professional books um it should work for fiction yeah, yeah. Um, why not? And I strongly believe there are already books on Amazon um, oh, uh, done with um, uh, GPT. Yeah, um, um, books for children, and and I know um, uh, several uh, books uh, which are um, yeah books with jokes. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, strange, but it works. Yeah, and oh. um, I, I think it's um, more difficult to do it uh, with. Um, good content um, with good authors um, and um, it might be quite easy to do it um, uh, with fiction um, if the um, LLMs are also um, have some kind of knowledge um, how some um, um, yeah aspects of those fiction uh, books in, in crime etc work yeah mm -hmm. so um, um, they can do it yeah sure maybe right. uh, with the um, very small team also yeah um maybe uh, it's um just one um person um and not a team of um um six or seven um people as i uh, showed today uh, with uh, colleagues from uh, all um departments and in the end we had three authors and uh, two editors working mm -hmm. on it yeah um so 
it might differ, but um, I strongly believe it is possible easily. Yeah. Yeah, I tried it myself. I uh, used ChatGPT4 to ask, I asked it uh, to prompt it, write me a dialogue. This is the conflict and do it in the style of Moliere. And it was acceptable. Yeah, it was yeah. lacking a little bit of spirit. Yeah, but I think that's just, just a matter of month. Mm. Yeah, um, we, we, we started um, um, last year, uh, early last year, with a book cover created um, um, with AI. And um, it was a hand. It was a hand with the with the earth on top of it. Yeah, uh, it was abstract. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and the hand had um, no thumb. Yeah. Yeah. And if yeah. you if you if you know how how fast AI is developing in in, in just a few months, and now you can create images with um, photorealistic um, um, backgrounds, yeah, and creating hand is, 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 is not an issue anymore. But a year ago, we were so proud creating a book with AI um, with having five fingers, but no thumb, yeah? yeah. And mm -hmm. in the foreword of the book, we exactly wrote that, yeah? We said, we know this image is not perfect, but this is where we are, yeah? And, and maybe in a few we weeks, months, or a year, we are at a stage where this picture might be perfect, yeah? But today, AI is not perfect, and, and LLMs also are not perfect, yeah? You have to have a human in the loop to create good books, yeah? And to create um, books with value, yeah, also. True, sure, yeah. Just a recommendation, the latest thing is Sora, is also by uh, OpenAI Microsoft, they are doing videos, and there are some, it's not, issued it. I think it's just open for professional production, for movie production, and they got a release, a better release. But you can see movies on YouTube produced by them, and they're amazing. They are shots, um, drone shots across the Alps or um, city scenes of, of Tokyo, and you, it's, this is filmed. It's, yep. it's incredible. Yeah. But just a question for you. If you see your Wiesbaden project, what's the relation between human work and artificial intelligence work roughly a percentage half half 80 20 is always hmm. maybe it's a 20 percent ai mm -hmm. 20 okay. 30 i'm not so sure yeah, um, yeah. i have to idea. rethink it um this is difficult might be also different uh, with another book uh, it was the first time uh, we did that. So um, the authors were quite um, engaged and they had to do uh, quite a lot of copy editing. Yeah. Um, and um, in our uh, hackathon, we saw um, that um, there is a lot of room for improvement. Yeah. Where yeah. AI can help. And um, I think that um, the next iteration of this um, tool um, might even help more. Yeah, help the author more and um, help the author in order to uh, focus on content and not on writing um, sentences. Yeah, um, yeah. it's more um, a language tool and the author is a knowledge base. Yeah, okay. this is um, what we try to um, differentiate here and what we try to, 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 um, to sharpen in, in a way in this process. Yeah. So that the author and many of our authors, um, they are professionals. They are working in a company. Yeah, they are publishers working in marketing. They are consultants, etc. They yeah. don't have the time to to write to create um, summaries, for example. Yeah, um, but they have the knowledge. They have the ideas, and 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 this is what they want to transport in in in, in text. Yeah, and there, um, um, AI can uh, create drafts. Yeah. And, and help um, summarize, uh, summarize uh, topics and, um, and to create sentences out of bullet points, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's brilliant. If you have a content pool, the author generating the content, and then you can derivatives to different target groups. Also, you can say, this is the content, do it for academic purposes, do it for practice, uh, practitioners and companies, or even yeah. do it in simple language for people yeah. who have language difficulties and uh, want to know about the, uh, the theme. Very good. Uh, there are some questions for you um, from, from the chat. How did you tackle the problem of standard phrases 
generated by all the GPTs today. <laughs> Yes, as I said before, there was a lot of um, uh, copy editing um, after the draft we created on that day. Yeah, we, we created 180 pages on that day, but afterwards there was, let's say, three weeks of copy editing. Yeah, and, um, and there um, the authors and the uh, editorial colleagues here uh, had to delete and to rewrite uh, quite a lot of text. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, as I said before, it, it's not a perfect um, world, um, it's not um, uh, doing all the work for you, but it helps uh, um, to, 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 to structure things, yeah? and it helps also the author mm -hmm. to think about the book he or she wants to create. Um, if you have to create a prompt, you have to be quite precise to get the result you want. Yeah, so you have to be deep inside the topic. It's not create me a book. You mm -hmm. have to, to, to write a prompt which is quite precise in order to create a passage of text which should or could fit in a book. Yeah, so um, in the end, um, yeah, you have to um, check the text. You have to read it. It's always, as I said uh, before, it's human in the loop. Yeah, it's not... Um, uh, it's not uh, creating a prompt and printing the book. Yeah, yeah. it's not that easy. No. Well, I'm, I'm sure the next function of GPT-5 will be create a prompt. <laughs> <laughs> create a precise prompt. And um, maybe there there is um, 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 this uh, famous um, Chinese um, um, CEO um, who was interviewed just a very few days ago, um, and he said um, um, the language. Um, which should be taught in school is not programming it's language yeah you have to yeah. be precise you have to to know what you ask the system um so it's not in, in the future um that we should teach our children to to code yeah but to ask yeah. precise yeah. yeah this is this is fantastic yeah, yeah. Uh, think about yeah. it yeah um it's it's not um uh, just as we uh, know just a very few years ago when we said uh, everything is going to AI and, and, and digitalization and we need to code and in school we need to have um, 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 uh, taught um, how, how to have to, the, the teachers have to, ta to teach how to code. Um, no, we have systems who know what you are saying, who understand you, who will understand you. Just think of the next level of uh, Siri or Alexa, um, understanding this um, quality of, of, of um, input we have in our speech and getting results in the quality you can read in books. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you have to be precise in what you say. So it's, um, it's better to know uh, a language and, and uh, it's a language model. Yeah. So we have to interact with the language. Yeah. So this is what he said, and um, this is, um, I think, the next level um, of, 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 of AI um, coming to, to our uh, near future. Yeah. Yeah. Willis, you, you want to say Yeah, I, I would like to share that uh, in my team, we are using uh, ChatGPT uh, in order to generate pre-code uh, of what uh, we want to do uh, as a function for the robotics or for the vision. And it, it's the same way uh, that uh, explained Andreas. I, I mean, uh, you have to prompt uh, what you 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 are uh, looking for. And uh, mainly, my team uh, says that uh, uh, it's provide uh, uh, mainly the structure, but uh, it's blah blah blah, and you have to to uh, to clean the code. And uh, because we are uh, making a, a robotic as a real time, we are competing with the i core seven in the in the computer so uh, we uh, we just take from chat gpt uh, 50 yeah i would say 50 55 percent of uh, pre pre work and then we we code uh, uh, directly uh, the function we we want to do yeah. but I, I would say it, it can be a transposition of what uh, andres explained uh, for writing a book and i, I would say now uh, for robotics and uh, developing programs using also ChatGPT could be, a, uh, uh, yeah, a kind of efficiency to to uh, 
to find the structure. Yes, and using the richness of language, says Tim in the oh. chat, which is absolutely yeah. right. Yeah, Lorenzo has a question. Could you possibly put it on the screen? It's for all of them. Reshaping a question, extending it to Gasha. Which key skills linked to AI do you wish to find in staff you're going to hire in the next five years in Europe? Well, first of all, let me uh, thank you for this uh, webinar. I, for me, it has been extremely uh, inspiring and not only because I always dreamt of writing a book, um, but this actually, when you were speaking about uh, language and, and chat GPT and what we need to make it work, uh, you know, when I was a child, uh, we didn't have a computer. And when the first computers came, we were playing ping pong on these screens, you know, the things uh, that that was already the dream. When my kids asked me when I had my first phone, I was 25. <laughs> Not because my parents have forbidden. It simply these things didn't exist. Um, mm. And it's kind of funny that nowadays we're turning back and it's again the language that we need. It's not the coding, it's not the zero ones, it's actually being able to express ourselves. Uh, so maybe it's not exactly the, the answer that, uh, that you are looking for, but I think this capacity of critical thinking, uh, of understanding, of being able to read and write, <laughs> Uh, is actually probably more crucial nowadays because the technology is changing. I mean, who would have thought just a few years ago that we will be discussing chat GPT and prompts and writing books with it? I mean, this was completely unthinkable. So yeah, yeah the future um, will probably surprise us many times and we kind of have to go back to these basic skills. Yeah. I'd like to pass the question to Giovanni which is um, referring to his own company, Gamma Gamma, and you're doing so many case studies for, for your clients. What would you be your, your choice of skill? Yes, thank you, Hauke. Well, um, I really agree with, uh, with Andrea Sulis uh, as well. Um, I can answer in terms of who I'm hiring now. Um, we, we, we always look for people with a technical background, but with two main uh, uh, key things to, to check. The curiosity in learning, because uh, the technology is changing uh, really, really quickly, and you can't uh, in some way trust in just what you already know. I mean, there, you, you really need to, to be curious to learn something which uh, is hard to, to foresee now, but which I'm sure will change the way we do AI in a couple of months. And so this is the first thing. And the second thing is creative thinking, which is, uh, I mean, uh, another phase of the same um, uh, answer that were provided by, by other speakers. And it's a way to, to look at problems, at technical problems, at mathematical ones, not just in terms of uh, the known uh, algorithms and the known path to, to solve an issue, but also to, you know, to, to rephrase uh, problems and, and prompts as well uh, to meet the requirements that you are, you're facing. Okay, thank you. I've got questions for Elise. It's in, in fact, it's inspired by Andreas when he said, uh, we avoid hallucinations which sometimes arise when you deal with uh, ChatGPT or large language models, or generative AI, AI in, in general. Coming back to KUKA and your robot arms, possibly you know the James Bond movie, Die Another Day. Uh, mm -hmm. You've got an extensive scene with robots, robotic arms by KUKA, and I mm -hmm. imagine what happens if these things get hallucinations? How do you avoid hallucinations yeah. in your work with robotics? So uh, that is why we have not selected deep learning. Deep, deep learning is a way to understand the, the scene with uh, all pixels, and uh, it's a st statistical uh, answer. So uh, there is a, a possibility that the robot, uh, when it is glued uh, in a position, uh, make uh, some surprising movements. 
So that's why we are selecting a reinforcement AI as an algorithm. So uh, the robot is only able to, uh, to uh, drive what uh, he has learned before. And if he's stuck, uh, it, it will go to the previous solution very shortly. And then you can have a, a human that uh, introduced new knowledge, uh, having a key uh, uh, knowledge for uh, teaching by the hand, uh, the end of the story. So um, uh, this is uh, the safety we bring uh, using this uh, algorithm uh, as a reinforcement AI. We, we are not uh, confident of uh, using uh, deep learning for uh, energy consumption for the training and the the, the, the setup of a uh, picture you have to to input. Uh, I, I would just say that uh, um, if you are looking for some troubles or defaults uh, in the industry, maybe there is two or five percent of default. So if you have to to document it uh, as a picture, uh, two percent of default. You are waiting long months to to get the the samples. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Elias. A question for Andreas. Andreas, you said your book will soon be available in English, and it's a strong recommendation for me just to to get it and to read it. You will do that by KI, I presume, which is DeepL on own system, in-house system. Exactly. I'm um, just trying to start my camera. Yeah. Um, Yes, we are um, translating uh, this book uh, in, uh, into the, the English language, and um, this book will be ready in, I think, two months. Um, so um, maybe in the future there will be um, a, a process where the German and the English version might be um, published uh, on the same day. Yeah, But um, in this day, uh, well, in this case, uh, we did that um, after the, the German language book. Um, exactly also in order to learn yeah um, how is the target group reacting um, we are a publisher and and as a, a publishing director here uh, for for a german imprint um, i'm also looking uh, to create a turnover yeah the book has to work in the target group yeah there should be some some people reading and buying the book yeah so um, we have to uh, to think of the market yeah also and um we see quite a lot of usage uh, in the in the ebook, and um, this is a reason for us also to do the the English book. Yeah. Yeah. Can you just give them an, us a flavor of how is the percentage of shortening the time of producing a book with uh, using KI? If it's hundred percent conventional with lecturing and, and co-reading, proofreading, involving KI, shorten it about. 20%, I presume. Yeah, about about this. Yeah, depending sure. on the topic, maybe uh, this is um, uh, our first uh, experiment. Uh, maybe we we have to to do more and to to um, get better numbers and um, to optimize this a bit. But um, this should be uh, quite realistic, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, was my guess. But because Pareto is always right, it's always 80-20. and I think that turns. In a couple of months, might be it's just twenty percent human input and eighty percent artificial intelligence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So um, um, it it was almost um, let's say half time in, in an optimistic case. Um, normally, it's it's five months, and in in this case, with quite a lot of copy editing, uh, we had um, yeah two to three months. Yeah, with production time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Are uh, some uh, some more questions from the audience using the chat? Do the speakers have any questions? Could be. <laughs> well, if not, thank you very much. It was, I think, for me, it was an amazing morning with great with great. Um, speakers and great idiots. And I thank, of course, the speakers, um, Andreas Fung from Springer Nature, Giovanni Alceske from Amagama in Italy, and Ulysses Michon from Cognitive Engines in France. And of course, our uh, EVs, which is dynamic in France, Alpha RLH, and R2 Digit in Bologna. And we are 
the uh, the German editor in Frankfurt. And a big, big, big uh, hand and thanks for Gosha from the European Commission to uh, speak the nice words in the beginning and I hand over to her for the final words and then we have a um, bye-bye. Well, let me just say thank you again. It has been really uh, wonderful and uh, inspiring for me um, to, 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 to be here and to listen to, to all the real cases and uh, developments that are already happening uh, on the ground. And uh, for me, the lesson that I'm taking from, from this is that we really have to do more in, in, in promoting the solutions that our companies are already having and, and developing to make them wider known. First, maybe to the wider ID network and, and then to other countries and other, uh, other companies. So I'm sure we will uh, speak again and see each other again to be able to develop that further. Thank you again. Really very, very inspiring morning. Thank you. Thank you very much to give uh, also the honor to having you. So it's 99 minutes of uh, applied artificial intelligence because we have one minute in our meeting. Thank you all. Thank you all for your interest, all the participants. This session is recorded and you can access this and have a review and uh, click on the QR codes and have a review of the charts. So thank you very much and bye bye from Europe.